And hello, welcome back to my living room. Um, it's another beautiful day outside. Uh, we're just waiting for the Swifts to turn up. Um, there's no Swifts yet for me in North London. I asked on Twitter yesterday, nobody else seems to have seen any yet. So come on Swifts, we just need you right now to come and cheer us up um, in the middle of this very difficult time. And things, things are, they have been getting worse. It's been a whole week. And you know, this is the front of the Daily Mirror today. These are 35 NHS workers who have now died as a result of coronavirus. And we've still got, it's been a whole week, you know, since the last time we, we were here, um, we've still got NHS workers crying out for PPE. We know that the government missed three opportunities to get PPE just for those really important clinical staff. Um, and that means, well, while this isn't being sorted out, we've got a growing crisis in our care homes as well. Um, care homes are where you know, disabled people, where older people are living, where we've got staff there who are underpaid, under-resourced, acting, uh, acting in ways that are so heroic, but also in extreme danger. I, I'm so worried about how things are going. Um, we've got the Prime Minister's out of hospital. Um, he's been giving thanks to the to the migrant nurses who helped him. I hope that's um, something that will continue in change of how useful towards the NHS in future. And as Greens, we've been talking this week about uh, data, about making sure that we can do the kind of democratic scrutiny that we're elected to do in places like Parliament, um, in the House of Commons, the House of Lords, uh, me and Caroline Russell in the London Assembly. At the moment, these, these forums aren't sitting. We're not able to get um, the sort of legal requirements of answers to questions through that we're normally getting. Um, so things are very difficult, but we need more data, especially on the risks people are facing in different occupations and in different settings like care homes. So um, yes, it's a very worrying week. Um, this week on the programme, on my, my screen here in my living room, uh, we're going to be welcoming shortly um, my fellow Green Assembly member, Caroline Russell, and Lenny Jones from the Guardians of the Arches. And we're going to be talking about small businesses. Um, and that's going to be um, really excellent. Uh, Caroline helped win a, a rent holiday for Arches tenants at the beginning of the crisis. Guardians of the Arches supports many businesses based in railway arches around London. And then later on, do not go away because we're going to be showing you the, uh, the elections, the candidates and the results for the elections for the Green Party spokes cats. Yes, that's the world's cutest and most needed election this year. Um, so moving on now, let's, uh, let's put uh, Lenny on my screen and talk um, to Lenny um, about your work. Hello Lenny, thank Hello. you. Hello, can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Really, really nice to speak to you. So just briefly, uh, before we start talking about it, what, what are the Guardians of the Arches? Um, what sorts of businesses do you represent? Um, so Guardians of the Arches is a national non-profit tenants association. Um, and we represent the interests of thousands of small businesses in railway property um, across the country, hundreds of which occupy railway arches um, in London. And that's, there's, a, there's a, a lot of railway arches in London, we're all aware of them. Um, so how, how, many, how many members do you have in London? How Sorry, many, I didn't hear you. How many members do you have in London? So um, um, our, we, um, our membership numbers um, uh, currently, we represent about 10% of um, London railway arches. That's a lot. So switching over to Caroline now. Um, Caroline, welcome. You're my fellow London Assembly member. Um, nice to see you. I see, I see you quite <laughs> So this is quite familiar for me and you to be talking on today. Um, you, you've set up the Economy Committee in the Assembly. Um, tell us about what happened at the beginning of the coronavirus crisis and, and how you and Lenny ganged up to, to get some help. Well, it, it seems extraordinary now, but there was, um, before we went into lockdown, there was a final mayor's question time. And um, I was able to ask the mayor to um, look out for the 86% of his um, railway arch tenants who are small businesses and, um, and ask him to give them a 100% rent holiday for the three months anticipated of, of lockdown. And he did, he listened and he did that. And then after that, um, 
Lenny was doing amazing campaigning with Guardians of the Arches. And we managed to, through a lot of Twitter pressure and general public pressure, um, and amazing campaigning by, by Lenny and, and the Guardians of the Arches, managed to get the Arches company, who bought all the Arches from Network Rail, to follow suit and also to give a proper rent holiday to their small business tenants, which really has made, a, you know, does make a big difference because these, you know, suddenly lost everything. Mm. So, Lenny, um, I know that uh, Archer's businesses were not doing that well before this. There were problems with rents. Um, can, you, can you tell us why you set up the organisation and, and how important um, Archer's businesses are to London's economy? So um, our, our organisation kind of really began um, as a result of rental increases across London um, back in 2015 um, and, and began life as a campaign group. Um, in, in trying to tackle the, the challenges of network rail sale of the arches and, and huge rental increases. Um, I'm a small business owner as well and I own a, a small independent Ducati specialist um, called Rosso Corsa in East London and we were threatened with a rental increase of 365%. So you know the, the scale of this issue um, I soon found out was huge across London especially um, and we began working collectively and I think you know that was a big challenge for us as an organization um, in forming um, in that small business owners tend to operate very defensively by nature you know we're, we're grafters we're risk takers um, and, and we're entrepreneurs and I think working <clears throat> working collectively and trusting one another is a, has, is a real mind shift for um, many small business owners. Um, but by establishing that trust and, and that foundation, we've really created an, an impenetrable um, basis um, as an organization to, to tackle the issues that, that we're facing. But yeah, you know, we've, we've come into this crisis really quite battle weary, I would say, um, mm -hmm. because of the, the sheer scale of, of rental increases affecting um, the small business owners in London and um, and the property market as a whole um, is that you know that it's the broader issue around um, availability of affordable workspace and and protecting the diversity of small business yeah no absolutely and so you, you're obviously quite independent minded and quite small businesses and very diverse businesses um, it's obviously you know um, arch businesses can be making things or they can be selling things or they can be repairing things you know all things that that greens support as well as small businesses as well um how how have you been doing with the other kinds of government support that's coming through in the coronavirus crisis um how are your businesses faring with things like the grants and loans that are, that are on offer from the government um so you know, we, with one sense, we, we applaud um, that action is being taken by the government and, um, and the, the, but the way in which it's being administered is quite challenging. I think, um, you know, the government and, and local councils have, are working together to distribute funding um, across the small businesses. But I think the basis in which that is encouraging small businesses to get into further positions of debt um, under the government loan scheme is not something that's, um, you know, it's quite a short-sighted positioning. And um, as you say, many of the businesses under the arches, especially in our cities, tend to be light industrial and manufacturing um, by nature because of the affordability of that kind of dirty workspace, really, um, that, that's so important that we protect. Um, you know, these, these particular businesses are not being supported adequately um, by any means um, under the current support provided by the government. So what kind of gaps need to be filled? Um, how, how are you being left out in lots of ways? So to, perhaps the best way is to give you some examples of situations. So uh, um, as, as one example, we have a, a mobile caterer based under the arches in Bermondsey and he doesn't use his property for um, public access, but he uses his property to store his mobile catering equipment. Now, obviously, his business has come to an absolute standstill. Um, but because of the remits and constraints around the government support, it means that 
because of his property usage being light industrial and not accessible to the public, it means that he doesn't then qualify um, for grant support, which, you know, obviously he desperately needs. Um, and another example could be, you know, we've got a business over in Shoreditch um, that's an independent um, small business, a family business that's been viable and, and um, established for, for a significant amount of time that's now <coughs> found itself on, on the brink of, of collapse because it, the rateable values in Shoreditch are extremely high in yeah. comparison to the rest of the country. And so then he, you know, this particular business owner falls short of eligibility, I cries. So, you know, there's a lot of challenges around the administration of this support. Yeah, and you, and you have to get loans as well um, from the banks. And these need to be, is it, am I right that they need to be secured loans and that therefore small businesses are finding those hard to pick up in general? Yes. So um, a lot of small businesses have got, got, come into this crisis, you know, like, like you know, we, we talk about underlying health issues. They've, they kind of come into the crisis with underlying financial issues. And, um, you know, they're finding that to secure these loans, even though it may only be 20% that has to be secured by the business um, itself, that is still too much. But it's also the long-sighted um, perspective of putting a business into further debt um, when it may already be um, owing money. Um, so it's, it's not the, the long-sighted safety net that, that we really need. And right now we have to look long-term. These businesses, if they, they, they collapse, it's the impact it's gonna have on the local economies, the communities, the people. It's not just about a, a, um, an idea or, or a, a passion uh, that people have in starting a new business. Um, it's also a, many families' financial stability. Um, and if we take that away, it's, you know, we're, we're looking at putting further strain on the state, on social care, um, because that's where, that's the only option that these people are going to have. Yeah. And, you know, so, from that perspective, we have to think very carefully. Yeah, so, so many of the businesses, I mean, I know, I'll come back to Caroline in a second, but so many of the businesses um, that we, we meet as, and we see as part of Guardians of the Arch, and you're a very, very strong, very visible campaign, by the way, you're doing a fantastic job. Uh, so many of you are part of that circular economy, that sort of the manufacturing that we need to have within London, the repairing and the, the reusing and the services and, and, and all of those things that we need to see more of, we cannot afford to let you disappear as part of this crisis or as part of the wider pressures that are on the economy. Caroline, coming back to you, um, I'm going to switch to Caroline now, sorry Lenny, one second. Uh, here's Caroline now on my screen. Um, coming back to you, I mean you've been working on this as part of the Economy Committee in, in London but also we've been talking to councillors around the country, we had a, another really good um, Zoom call with councillors. Um, what, what, what is there still that the government needs to do and what, what are we going to be doing to, to try and raise that issue, those issues with the government? Well, I think that, that what the government needs to be doing is thinking about the exceptions. I mean, we heard um, when we were talking to councillors across the country last night, we heard about, for instance, farms that have diversified and don't fit into the, the right categories. And Lenny was talking about, um, uh, you know, the, the person with the mobile catering van that, that doesn't fit in the categories. And we also have a problem in London of rateable values being really high so that many very small businesses that are just getting by and, and managing to, to stay afloat, um, but they're paying very, very high rates because of the high land values in London. And so they're just falling out of getting the £10,000 grants that are available to small businesses under a 15000 rateable value property level. So I think the, the government needs to be looking at the, the gaps they're creating and the people that are falling through these gaps. Because as you said earlier, we really need these small businesses to come through this crisis and to be there as, as we come out of it. Because those are the businesses that are properly sustainable, the ones that help repair things, the ones that um, maintain things. You know, those are, those are the businesses we really need. So final word to Lenny then, um, if I can put you back on, getting better at this. Uh, Lenny, what can, what can we do to help and support you? Um, we should follow you on Twitter. We, I mean, what, what else can we do to, to, to help your campaign as, as this crisis goes on and in future? 
I think, um, you know, supporting your local businesses is absolutely critical. And I think, you know, as, as we are coming through this crisis, we will find that, you know, staying local, less travel um, and supporting local businesses is absolutely critical for us. Um, and also writing to your MPs, um, letting them know how, how important having the, the bicycle repair is and the car garages and those local services is to you as a person is, um, is a fantastic way that people can all contribute to help. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Welcome. Thank you for coming in my living room. Um, you know, it's nice to nice to see people. And uh, thank you, um, Jenny, our director, for, for steering us through having two guests once on the program. Uh, that was uh, that was uh, quite a challenge. But thank you, Lenny. Keep up the really good work. Um, and we will see you in real life, I hope, soon. And we'll keep in touch and keep keep supporting you uh, through our work as well. Thank you, Caroline. Um, see you later. <laughs> on zoom again <laughs> great well thank you thank you again to everyone um so i wanted to now uh move to our next feature which i'm very excited about yes young the young greens uh tom tom hazel from the young greens has done everyone a huge service um in the last two, two weeks by holding elections for green party spokes cats people from the greens have been able to nominate their cats to be the official spokescats, or the semi-official spokescats of the Green Party. Um, and I wanted to cover that now um, and show you some pictures of cats, because why not? Um, so let's have a look now. Right, here we go. We're gonna, oh my goodness, here we go, some cats. Here we go. This is Ai Weiwei, who is Vivian's cat. And Ai Weiwei lived in China and Sweden before settling in the UK and is an expert in, an expert in foreign affairs. Very good pun action, Vivian. Next we have Rama, another one of Vivian's cats, uh, perusing our manifesto there. Um, Rama encourages energy conservation, is a big fan of, fan of heat. Um, next up we have Jojo. Um, who's coming in a second? Yeah, oh, look at Jojo. Jojo is 15, I love an old cat. Um, Jojo was very much involved in the campaign in Bristol in the general election um, in 2019 um, and very much enjoys canvassing on the local streets. Now we have uh, Caramel, um, Caramel McMuffin, um, who uh, is playing the redistribution of the mouse economy and is Nanette uh, Councillor in Norwich's cat, beautiful. Next up we have uh, Doug's cat, Kropotkin, um, who has a, a very um, technical manifesto, <laughs> uh, which uh, actually draws attention to the fact that the mutual aid tendency um, in man is a very uh, long-standing tendency, I can't even do it. Uh, now we have Ronnie um, on a train there, he wants to Renationalise the railways, thinks all carriages should be first class, very much support that. Not a fan of Richard Branson, it belongs to Florence. And here we have Bob and Rita, who are Peter Andrew's cat and are absolutely gorgeous. They're standing as co spokespeople, which I very much support, and also support proportional election systems. Pun action will get you all the votes, Peter. Now we have Queenie, he's having a little drink there, uh, Joe's cat, and uh, it's from the southwest now, but was homeless in Birmingham for many years. And I love a rescue cat. This looks a lot like a rescue cat I had uh, a few years ago, too. Now we have Gizmo, uh, from a uh, member of Manchester Green Party, Lottie's cat. Um, he uh, enjoys recycling. This is one of his recycling schemes that you can see here. You'll see a bit of a theme emerging. Um, some of the cats are very, very into their cardboard. Recycling. Now we have more co leader candidates, Socks and Softy from Connor. They want to make cars obsolete by 2030 and plant a child, a tree for every child born. They're absolutely gorgeous there. Um, this is Maggie, another Birmingham rescue cat who uh, travelled to live with Liam in Nottingham on public transport. Not surprisingly, Maggie believes in a public transport system owned by the people. Uh, Tuppence is particularly gorgeous um, and it's been borrowed for the, for the lockdown for, by Catriona. Um, she's an anti-austerity cat. This is a cat next that I see quite a lot of on social media um, because I am a big fan of Owens. And uh, Toffee uh, is not keen on lockdown, 
um, but also doesn't understand the obsession that the world has with productivity and is demonstrating that here. Um, next up, we have uh, Hercules, a uh, cat from, uh, owned by Hannah Clare, who's a councillor in Brighton. Um, and um, he doesn't really like looking at the state of the world today. He's demonstrating that preference in the picture there. Um, this is a very, very cute cat, Dilla. Um, Dilla uh, once killed a moth by accident and wants to prohibit idling of engines and knows a lot about idling, apparently. And here we next have Polo, um, Andy from Burnley's uh, cat, another councillor's cat. Cats, councillor cats are strong, strong showing. Um, Polo likes sitting in baths, but would like all water not to be allowed into any baths at any time. Very, very sweet. Um, then we have Jasper from Catherine. Um, all cats should be entitled to three minutes of strokes. Very gorgeous Casper, uh, Jasper there. And then we have another cat from Vivian. Vivian has three cats entered into this. This is Dylan. Um, again, supporting recycling and being supported by recycling in this picture. And uh, then we have Brian, another cat from Owen, um, who um, is a very, very serious cat and also doing a lot of recycling support there um, in his cardboard box. Very, very gorgeous. So I'll carry on scrolling through some more of the candidates. There's too many to mention. So yes, um, as green elections are required to be, this election was held using a proportional representation system. And because we're choosing just a few candidates, it was a single transferable vote method. And um, we can see, I think, results of the rounds, um, but it took this is really funny. Nice one, Tom. Um, STV is amazing because it's so simple to vote. You just rank your candidates in order of preference and then it's really fiendish. So it took 21 rounds of voting to whistle down all these cats to find the winners. Um, and the winners um, were Bob and Rita, who you remember with the gorgeous puppy kittens from Underwood, and Polo, whose owner I've forgotten gotten um where are we oh it's andy andy's cat um polo was the was the winners and then the deputy spokes cat was kapotkin who is the, the congratulations to all of you and a, and a round of applause for all of you. <laughs> so yeah um that's that's it for today <laughs> i will I, I wish i could have shown you more of those cats um but you can definitely find them um, look up tom hazel from the young greens on twitter you can see all the candidates all their manifestos and if like me you feel like you need to look at cats on a regular basis at the moment they're there for you green spokes cats um so yeah thank you very much for coming to my living room again uh that was loads of fun um i look forward to having you back again next week um please send in your ideas uh, for things I should be covering, fun things and people, inspiring people that I can interview who are doing good work around London. Thank you very, very much and goodbye. <laughs>